Hey what's up guys and welcome to today's tech video. In this video I'm going to show you how to connect an external LiPo battery into your AP with this lanyard cable. To make AP, shoot as fast as this one. But before I'm getting into how it's done, let me talk about the advantages of this system. Um, first of all, you can go with higher voltage LiPo batteries because uh, in an AP you only have so much space, um, you know, here under the barrel and fitting an 11.1 .1 LiPo in there can be really difficult. Sometimes you have to dremel out, you know, some of the plastic and the polymer. So, it's not a really good option. Then on top of that, the smaller LiPos sometimes don't perform very well at cold temperatures, while the big ones are still doing pretty well. Uh, additionally, you have a lot of capacities, you're pretty much unlimited. You can hook on a car battery to your AP if you want to. And also another advantage is that you cannot lose your AP anymore because you have the lanyard cable and you know the battery is in one of your pouches on your chest rig or your play carrier or your battle belt, whatever you're running. So in case your AP falls out of your holster, you always have the safety lanyard right here. Now that you know about the advantages, let me show you how I actually built this. Now this specific model is a Marui Glock 18C AP, but it also works on the Super models and the Double Eagle models and you know anyone. So it can be the USP, it can be the 1911 AP, it can be the high cap AP, it really works on any AP. Now here from the outside real quick, um, here I put this protection against cable bending so that the wires on the inside don't break if you know um, try to actually break or twist this. But yeah, let me get into how I actually did it and how you can do it to your AP. First of all, you have to open your AP. Now on every AP that's different, but here on the Glock you just press it in the back. Then you have to take off the, um, here the grip plates. This one and then this one, if it's really hard to do, you can always use a knife. Exactly like that. Uh, because what we want to do is we want to take out the actual gearbox. But before we can do that, we need to take apart the entire thing. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. Uh, first of all, we need to lose this screw, this screw and the screw over here to get rid of the of this cover right here. Then we have to press out this pin and pull it out here from the other side. Then we can pull back the nozzle to actually take out here the barrel assembly with the trigger. And then we can remove this whole thing. We don't need to modify anything on this part. Okay, then take a Phillips screwdriver and take off the metal piece here in the back. Then pull it towards the top to take it out. Then here the spring guard with the spring comes out for the nozzle return. Then we can already push out the pins of the gearbox. So we have one pin here, we have one pin here. If you're having a hard time getting those pins out, you have to use some force. Okay, we need stronger tools. Okay, there we go. Then here the next one. One is here in the back. And the last one is here on the bottom. Now we have to take out the nozzle. Before we can pull out the gearbox, we have to lose those two small Phillips screws on the bottom. One here, one there. Now we can take off this plate. And we can pull out the gearbox through the bottom. 
Okay, here's where all the magic happens. That's the gearbox of the AEP and you know, here's also all the electronics. Now, when you will disassemble the AEP, you will have two wires coming from here to the actual battery connector. You can use your soldering tool and get rid of the whole thing. You can actually remove all the wires from the gearbox. So all the wires you see, take the soldering tool and take them off because you have to redo it completely in a different way. Uh, what you need material wise is first of all, this spiral cable. The cables on the inside here should have at least one square millimeter. Copper would be ideal here. Don't go with anything smaller than one square millimeter on these cables because this battery can supply quite a lot of current and the AEP draws I think 10 amps and anything that's smaller than one square millimeter will just you know get too hot and also the resistance will be too high. So one square millimeter or higher and ideally two wires. You shouldn't buy one of those cables that have three wires. For example, the power plug extensions from your wall plug because those have the two poles and then ground. You don't want three wires because then it gets sick and stiff. You want the two wire variant. Where can you get those? Um, you can just check your best. Maybe you can get your girlfriend's razor cable or hair dryer cables or sometimes like this. Or what you can also do, you can go into the internet and just buy one from Amazon. Right here, for example, here with this cord for electrical razors. Uh, when you zoom in on this picture, you will see that it is two lines, so two cables, which is ideally. It doesn't say how big the wires actually are, but from the pictures you can see it's not a tiny one. Uh, be careful with the spiral cables for charging mobile phones, you know, the ones that you plug into your um, cigarette igniter in the car because those are too thin and they will not support the current. Okay, now that you have the cable, you also have to get whatever connector you prefer, you know, mini Tamiya, Tamiya Large or here Deans in my case, because that's what I'm using all my batteries. And then on top of that, you also need wiring. Here this one is 0.75 square millimeter, which um, is the biggest that you can actually fit into those you know, tiny grooves. Uh, you can buy those in any electronic store, you know, not like consumer electronic, but more like DIY electronic store. And you should also find it on Amazon. I will, I will leave links to all those things in the description. Um, hope you guys can find those very specific parts. Um, then what I also recommend is to get one of these here. Uh, now these protect the cable against breaking because obviously you will, you know, handle your pistol very rough and if the cable always gets bent in the same spot, it might break. Now I got this one from an old device that I didn't use anymore. Here for example on this airsoft battery charging station, uh, we have this part so you can just, if you have something like this that you don't need anymore, you know, it can be an old phone, like a landline phone or anything like this. I think this one was from a landline phone. Uh, you can just disassemble the part and take out this um, cable protector. Then on top of that you need um, of course the soldering tool for doing all the work and here shri electrical shrimp tube to you know make everything nice and clean. Cable tie is also recommended, small cable tie. Here I will explain later why you need it. Isolation tape is great and I think that's all you need. Okay, so once you removed all the wiring from an AEG gearbox, what you have to do now is rewire the whole thing. So first of all, you take your spiral cable, you cut the power plug connector and the two wires, you just solder your Deans connector on there. Now usually there is two colors in there, there's red and blue or there's black and black, but one of the black wires then has a white line on it. This lets you distinguish what's the plus and what's the minus cable. So however you connect those two cables here on the Deans connector, you have to take care how you connect it on this side, because otherwise the motor turns in the wrong direction and your AP is not gonna shoot. So on the Deans connector, this is always the minus one, this is always the plus one. So remember which cables you connected to on the inside of the spiral cable and the minus cable then goes here onto the motor on this side. Um, you can also, you can just remember the black cable that went down here to the motor. Black is always minus, red is always plus. Okay, here in my case I have blue and gray. Again, every spiral cable will be different. But I said that blue will be minus and I connected it to minus of the motor. Then the plus I connected here onto the smaller diameter cable because this cable is too big to fit into this groove. So I connected it to the 0.75 square millimeter cable. I put some isolation tape around here 
Uh, shrink tube would be better, but there's not enough space to actually fit the shrink tube. This is why I have isolation tape here. Let me show you the camera again. This one is connected to minus of the motor and the plus one goes up here all the way up and then usually right here the cables, the standard cables, they would go to the switch unit, but we don't do that. We go instead over the top of this nozzle housing right here. And now the reason why I removed the isolation of this cable is because there is this cover that will later go on here. And if you don't remove the isolation, you don't have enough space. So I removed the isolation and on top of that to make even more space for this, I took a Dremel and cut a tiny, tiny slot in here. So the, the wires rest in here and they are pretty much flush with the housing, as you can see. This is why I can still fit the cover nicely and there is no problem with, you know, getting the holes of the cover over the actual threads of the part below. Okay, then I'm going down here to one side of the switch unit. Uh, in this case here, the one on the inside. And then I connect another cable, again a 0.75 square millimeter wire, I connect it here and then go down the gearbox again and onto the plus pole. So real quick, super basic electricity, um, the power comes here from the battery. Um, so plus goes all the way through the spiral, then it goes here to the switch unit. And here is where it stops because this switch unit is not connected right now. So when I close the actual circuit by, you know, pressing the switch unit, you will see that the AEP gearbox shoots uh, because it connects those two wires basically. So the current goes down here through the motor, um, then the motor starts turning and then through the minus it goes back into the battery. Um, so this is the very simplified explained electronics of this whole system. Now, um, let's get back to how I do the cable protection. Uh, again, I took it from a device like this and what I did is I took the base plate of the AEP. Now that's the thing that goes here. And I took a Dremel and cut out this shape right here. You know, usually it's closed right here. You know, it's the bottom of a Glock AP. And I just took the Dremel and grinded this part out. This way I can use this cable protector. And this was also not the right shape. So I also took a Dremel and made this part right here rectangular. Again, you know, some grinding and some DIY. And then I can just plug this together. Here we go. What I then did is um, there's a pin going through the grip right here that goes through the grip and through this part. So what I did is I took a drill, a tiny, tiny drill bit, I think two millimeter, and drilled through this actual rubber. So when I now assemble the whole thing, this pin will go, you know, through here. And then it goes into this part. Let me align that real quick. It goes into that part and then it goes through the, the cable protector. And there we go. This is how the whole thing is connected. And this is why this cable protector will not fall off. You know, it will not slip down the cable. Uh, what I also did uh, to make sure that this cable will not slip through this cable protector is I put a cable tie here on the end of the insulation, which makes sure that I can't rip out the cable from the AP. So yeah, and now the whole thing gets assembled. Here I have to make sure that the isolation actually covers the soldering spot, otherwise I have a short circuit, which is bad for the battery. Let's unplug this. Yeah, now I just screw the whole thing together. There we go. I have to push out this pin again because otherwise I can't slide the gearbox in. Um, 
now I just put it back into the frame of the pistol. And here you have to make sure that, that, that you don't squeeze any of the cables and that the isolation is in the right spot. Now comes the pin, just push it through. Okay, there we go. And then of course the rest of the pins. Okay, there we go. The gearbox is installed. Now we test it again if it actually shoots. That's perfect. So this is how I did the LiPo mode. All you have to do now is just assemble the whole thing back together, just like any AP, and you are good to go. Okay, and this was the video on how you can modify your AP to make it shoot as fast as mine. Now actually, while I was doing this video, I realized it is not that easy. Uh, you need some technical skills to actually do that. Um, the parts that are necessary are quite uh, not hard to get, but you really need to know what you're buying. So I will put links into the video description that will hopefully help you guys out so that you can do this modification yourself. Um, if you've never done any electrical work or working on airsoft guns, I do not recommend to do this. It is a quite hard modification, it needs some skill to do it, and I don't want you guys to mess up your AP. But, you know, maybe you have a tech workshop around the corner, or you have a friend who's really experienced with this, then maybe you can make it together with them. Okay, now let me know what you think about this modification. Before I'm ending the video, I would like to talk a little bit about AP tuning because I tried a bunch of stuff and there was many, many unnecessary things that didn't do anything at all to improve FPS, rate of fire, reliability and all that good stuff. The very first modification you should do is the LiPo mod. Trigger response is a lot snappier, rate of fire goes higher, um, you have more capacity usually and you can also play in cold winter games because LiPo batteries are more resistant than the ones they come with. The second most important modification is, in my opinion, a tight bar barrel. Here I have the PDI 6.01. It increases the FPS by, I think it was like 10 to 15 FPS. And then every other modification is pretty much useless. Here in my personal AP, I mixed um, Marui and Suma parts. So the whole thing is Marui, but what I changed is the cylinder. The cylinder is from Suma because it's a full cylinder, which means a little bit more air and you know in theory it can make the fps higher with a little bit heavier bb so more tools uh it didn't really do much i couldn't see any difference but i still put it in there because in theory it should improve i also put constant bearings in there uh, no difference at all i don't recommend this part because it just it just doesn't do anything then i tried the eagle six spring this would increase the fps by a little i think like 15 fps but it puts a lot more stress into the gearbox and i think in the long run i'm not sure if it's a good idea i think sticking with the normal spring is the way to go you have just a you know snappier trigger response a higher rate of fire and the whole gearbox just lasts long it's not gonna crack as easy and it's not gonna work with parts as easy what i also switched is um i took out the marui gears the marui gears are made of zinc and the suma gears are sintered so they are a lot harder and they can just take more shots they will be more reliable with these gears this is the tuning that i did to my ap i also tried a bunch of other things like the nine ball piston and the pdi piston head and all those funny things but seriously, none of this stuff made any difference. The biggest difference was made by the LiPo mod and then the precision inner barrel. The rest, just, just keep it stock and you're good to go. Okay, that was it. That was the modification video of my AEP. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. I hope it wasn't too difficult. Um, I feel it was a lot more difficult than I saw in the beginning than it would be. But... This modification is two years ago when I actually didn't even remember anymore how I did it. So when I was opening it, it was like, huh, actually it was kind of tough to do. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments also what you want to see next. You know, what do you want to see on an Orange Tech channel in the future? And that's it for this video.